Hello, I'm George Potter. Welcome to Gospel Tangents. Growing up in Jerusalem, it seems unlikely that Nephi ever had any training as a sailor. How did he get this experience? George Potter will tell us in our next conversation. We'll also talk about a little side story about the Magi. Is there a Book of Mormon connection? How did the Magi, the wise men, know about Jesus' birth? Check out our conversation. And there's a very interesting side note about this, okay, which I think is fascinating. Because I wrote, I wrote a story, uh, a fictional story called The Wise Men of Bountiful. The wise men, Constantine sent his soldiers down to southern Arabia to get the bones of the wise men. All the early Christian scholars believe the wise men came from southern Arabia. They were Magi. At the time of Christ, the Iranians were controlling, the Persians were controlling southern Arabia. So they were using the word Magi. Three Magi came from southern Arabia to worship the Christ child when he was born. How in the world did they ever know that the Christ child was born, the savior of the world? To my knowledge, only one person knew when, when the Lord would be born, and that was Lehi had gotten a vision. They had be born 600 years from then. Okay, they came from Oman. They came from the land of frankincense, myrrh, and gold. They were wealthy. Hmm. Okay, where does frankincense, myrrh, and gold, or frankincense, myrrh grow? Frankincense only in Arabia, in Oman, excuse me, in Salala, and in, in Somalia. The only two places in the world. Hmm. Okay. Lehi and Nephi would have gone there and built the ship. They would have taught the people the gospel, would have told them in 600 years the Lord is going to be born. Okay? So in 600 years, the people are looking for a sign. The sign comes. Lehi was right. He told us. We were looking for the sign. Give me another explanation for the three wise men that makes sense. There is none. I've actually heard they came from Iran, from Persia. That is because they use the word Magi. But the Persians, the language they were using in Southern Arabia at the time was, was Persian, okay? And they came from the East. If you look at the word Arabic in the, in the Bible dictionary, it says children of the East, okay? Hmm. But all the early scholars, Christian scholars, believe they came from Southern Arabia. The bones up at, the, was it Cologne? The cathedral at Cologne in, in Germany? Those bones came from Southern Arabia. Of the the wise bones men. of the wise men? Is yeah. that what you're talking about? In Cologne, yeah. Okay. Okay, Germany, you go there and you'll see there's a little thing. I, I've there. actually, I've heard there's a big um, kind of a burial site of supposedly the three wise men in, in Iran as well. Mm. So. Well, maybe, but, but give me another explanation as to how these wise men knew that that star represented the birth of the Savior. Lehi was the only person who knew about it. They were teaching the people as they went down into Arabia. The frankincense trail went right to Oman where the frankincense grew. Hmm. And certainly they were there for several years building that ship. And they would have taught the gospel. That's what a prophet does. Hmm. He doesn't hide in some wilderness place. I don't want anybody to know we're here. <laughs> Come on. Why not? Hmm. So it's an interesting explanation. But then it gets me to the, another point here. Once you get that ship into a, a nice calm harbor, okay, how do you do sea trials? You've got to have a harbor where you can take the ship out, test it, bring it back in, adjust the ballast, adjust the sails, adjust the rigging. Any ship that's ever built has to have sea trials. No one ever built the perfect ship and all of a sudden it sailed out. So they had to have a harbor where they could go in and out of. Karori, you have this magnificent natural breakwater where you sail calmly out past the, the rough seas of the Indian Ocean, bring it back in, do it again. How did Nephi learn to captain a ship? It takes dozens of skills that you have to get right the first time and every time if you're going to ever sail even out of the harbor and make it out of the harbor. Which is interesting is that that harbor was used in ancient times to be a shelter during the winter season for the ships of the Indian Ocean. Um, the Greeks wrote about it, you know, and the Arabs did it before them. But in the Indian Ocean, you sail one way 
in the spring and another way in the fall, okay, because the prevailing winds are the monsoons. So the ships would go from Oman, they'd go to India, then they'd cross over the Indian Ocean to um, Zanzibar, then they'd come back to Korori, and then they'd wait out the winter there where there's no wind in that harbor. These were the only sailors in the world at that time who knew how to sail across open seas, the only ones. There's no record ever of the Phoenicians being able to sail outside of the sight of land. They were great sailors, but we have no record of them ever sailing yeah, outside. I've heard that most ancient sailors generally kind of hug the, the land, but yeah. with a sail, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I'm not a well, sailor. Well, so. <laughs> okay. Now, it gets you to the fact that the Arabs knew how to use the stars to, to find their latitude. So they knew if they stayed on a certain latitude, they'd hidden in India, uh, their harbor. If they stayed in, the, in the, another latitude, they could get to Zanzibar in Africa. They could get across and they'd find Africa. So they were sailing across the Indian Ocean using latitude. But somebody had to teach Nephi how to sail. And these great sailors, captains at the time, they're like astronauts of today. They were sitting in Korori all winter long waiting for the prevailing winds. You don't think Curious Nephi didn't go to them and say, how do you do this? How do you do that? Could I practice with you this? What would I do with that? And so he was able to get that skill. He might have even, we speculate, have taken some, some seasoned sailors with him to, navigate, to, to use his ship, you know, to hmm. be able to sail his ship, because it's quite complicated to sail a ship. It's yeah, not an easy so. task. Now, the other thing that's interesting, in the Book of Mormon, Nephi, you know, they, they leave the harbor, they go down into the ship, okay, with their provisions, so we know they had a deck on the ship, which would have been a, an interesting provision for the time. But they, they then travel out to sea, and uh, Laman and Lemuel think, gee, this is a piece of cake, you know. Nephi seems to be handling this, this is really easy, you know. We can do this ourselves. They try, they tie them up, all of a sudden they, they don't know where they're going. They get themselves into a monsoon storm or something. It's a terrible tempest, it's called. It must have been horrible. They think they're going to sink. They finally let Nephi go. Nephi says, by the way, we have been driven back. How do you know they were driven back? Have you ever been in the middle of the ocean? He knew how to calculate latitude. Only the Arabs knew how to do that. Hmm. So he had to learn from them how to have calculated their latitude because he knew they had been driven back from their original course. So it's just very interesting, but all the resources you need, all those, those ones that are explicitly in the Book of Mormon are found at Korori. All the ones that are implicit of having to build a ship and, and learn how to sail it and all that are also found right there, all within 10 miles of each other. So, and by the way, that's where the trail ended. The only trail that existed it ended right there. So it seems logical to us that that's your best candidate for where they actually built the ship. Now, if you want to believe that there's a series of a thousand miracles that happened that were not recorded in the Book of Mormon, that they're able to build a ship without resources or without skill or anything else, you can believe whatever you want. We don't know, but we think as a candidate, that makes a lot of sense to somebody who's really know something about what it is, the difficulty of actually building and sailing a ship. Mm -hmm. I hope you enjoyed our conversation with George Potter. In our next and final conversation, we'll talk about where George thinks that Nephi landed. My theory is, is that the Book of Mormon took place in the Andes Mountains of Peru, Bolivia, Ecuador, uh, parts of Chile.